you've made given them a mention. Yeah, because they actually it. they actually sort of um, get to get a little like, like minded people, so there's not just one charity, yeah. but it's a format that obviously now works in the town, so that's something that's fantastic. And congratulations to them once again for over a thousand pounds. Um, we've also had a couple of other events going on recently. Updates on Felix Lowe's got talent in the carnival, oh, yes. yes. Well, Felix Lowe's got talent, but it's <coughs> extremely successful. Um, we we coerce judges, as you know. <laughs> yes. By, <laughs> by means both sort of whinging and, um, you know, we'll send the boys around with an iron bar. Mm. Um, but they come along and they are all surprised at the quality of the acts. And, yeah. and it is just fantastic. We, we've had a really good year. Um, if, we ran it for every weekend in February, as you know. Mm. The final was absolutely brilliant. Totally sold out. Um, our problem is we need next year we need somewhere bigger than the caravan park yes I suppose might be perhaps say a little bit more cooperative too but the spa is too big for spa is not mm. a seat so how on earth you can contemplate putting that i don't know but we just we'd love to find somewhere bigger than the caravan park um but not, not as big as the um as the spa we yeah you know you go through the list of places there's a, there's the club in Trinity st martin next door to the memorial hall I mean, can that hold? We've heard about 160, so not as good as we no, no. The Orwell, again, you know, not can't get so many in there. Um, and you just go to the venues in the town, and thus far we haven't come up with anywhere. Because that is something that Phoenix though hasn't got, and that is a large venue. I found this a few years ago. We have the spa, like you said, for something like Phoenix has got talent. Um, because it is a 900 seat auditorium, there's a lot of pressure on at least filling a quarter of that. Because otherwise the um, atmosphere and everything goes, doesn't it? Because not, you've not got a roar of people. And I, and I, I don't know, but I understand that it's quite expensive to hire. Mm, it is, yeah. And it has been to hire a couple of times and they've found it extremely expensive. So, uh, you know, it's, it's waiting. Well, everybody wants, if you're a business which is spies, they need to get as much money mm. as they can. If you're a charity, you need to do everything as cheap as you can. Yeah. So, you know, never try and show me, really. Because the other thing as well is um, we've had to restrict what acts we can have as well because we can't have anyone with anything particularly high because it's a ceiling height. Well, you, you <laughs> say um, that, but we, we did have extreme reality and um, the yes. things they do are just unbelievable. Yes. Um, but they were very successful. They were in the final. They, they were in the top three, so they'll, they'll be performing at this year's carnival, which is good. They're also holding a charity show I've forgotten the date, I think sometime in May, mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah. and that's down at the Brackenbury Sports Centre. And the whole idea of that is to, for them to try and raise funds to go off to um, America where they're competing in, I think, Miami. Miami, it's Miami yes. Yeah, somewhere in yeah, Miami. Yeah. Um, it's just fantastic what they do, and they, they've got different other people who are appearing with them. So um, obviously, wish them well. Oh, absolutely. They're incredible boys. And the carnival, what plans are afoot for the carnival? Well, um, the reason we do, well, one of the reasons why we do a Philly Search Got Talent is to up the profile of the carnival. And mm -hmm. um, by the amount of emails we've had of people asking to perform there, this has worked. So um, Excellent. we're always trying something new there. And uh, hopefully we can, we can fill the park on both days, which is the, would be Obama. Because um, we've changed the format this year, haven't we? There's been several meetings and the, the, the two days are going to be very different. Very different carnival this year. I mean, it's still in the melting pot, as you know, we're, we're trying to plan different mm. things. But again, it's it's finding what people want. I mean, you can't have all loud rock bands because that's no. clearly not, people, not what people want. But people, you can't have a daily boat to tug of war <laughs> and, <laughs> and band twirling. So, that, you know, we need to get a, get a mix right. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the, the hard part. We're going to have, uh, as I said, we're having. Um, extreme reality there and we're having the, the other two acts who, who came within the top three, they'll be performing yeah. there and I just think that the, the talent are absolutely fantastic so really looking forward to that. Because there's a lot of... Probably picking up rubbish I suppose. Because <laughs> 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 there's mean, a lot more involved in the carnival than people realise and obviously the I closer it gets Nick's going to come back in obviously he's yeah. still the chairman and uh, Nick will come back in and give a bit more of an update on the carnival near the time because it needs the support of the locals, the local town and businesses 
more than ever, as does Trimley Carnival. We must not forget Trimley Carnival. No, I know John Searles does a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. I think there's about three people on the, on the committee there, and two of which are John and his wife. I mean, they work incredibly hard. Mm -hmm. Again, another charity thing. Um, which, and to be honest with you, if, uh, if Trimley Carnival is anything like the Felix Show, when they really do fit in the level, the beast that has to be fed. Yeah. There's always something going on in your strength, you know. It doesn't just happen like all of these mm. challenges. <laughs> it certainly doesn't. And that also leads me quite nicely into the fact that you announced in the fly that you were involved in the motorcycle rally this year. Yes, absolutely. Which much like showing the rally per se. Yeah. Yes, I mean, that's actually, if it works as well as last year, it'd be fantastic. And last year we had more people in um, Hamilton Road than has ever been seen before. Mm -hmm. Everybody declared it a success. We filled the um, the car park box of the library that was totally full of motorcycles and lots of overspill. Um, Suffolk Coastal very, very kindly didn't charge for parking in mm -hmm. the last year and they're not doing it again this year, for which I take my hats off to them. Um, one of the weird things, we're not allowed to have people directing traffic by flapping their arms, but we can have people standing on the side of the road with a board and then they <laughs> car park, which is lovely. <laughs> Living signs, I think they're called. Living signs, but, right, okay. Um, you know, that's going well. We've, um, before, before to get the, um, this is progress for you, to book the triangle, the performing space there, we just used to have so can we have it on XYZ day, and they have an eight page form to fill in, so I suppose that's, that's progress. It was 14 pages. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> There was a, um, Heidi Grant and myself, we limited that down to yeah. somewhat of only eight. It was 14 plus pages to fill out, and we just took one look at it and went, I don't like no, it. No, no, no. I filled out nine of those forms this year. Oh, well, well, yeah. um, also, on the motorcycle show, it, it forms part of the Suffolk Advanced Motorcycles, so mm -hmm. they use it as their charity run, and they raise thousands of pounds for the hospice. Um, then they start off and they go on, on a circuitous route and end up in the yeah. stuff. And uh, motorcyclists, one of which I am, uh, are notoriously mean. But for that, it's a five pound entry fee, and Pete and a lot of the riders just chuck in twenty pounds, and mm. that will do. I don't want any change. So but the hospice touches everybody. And, uh, yeah, because there was actually, unbeknownst to some people in this area, the historic um, truck rally. Yes. I don't know if you've heard much about the truck rally, but they were really struggling to get the event off the ground this year because um, Yarmouth, which is where they all end up. Yeah. I've said no. You're not allowed to close the promenade this year. Oh, right. So their, their their entire thing may well be in jeopardy. Is that the East Coast truck? Yes. Yeah. yeah, they're having some problems at the moment. So I'm hoping that Simon will come in and sort of chat to us about it and give a rally cry and see mm. what we can do about that because they raise a phenomenal well, amount of money. Well, it would be good for them to come to Phoenix though because we have the historic vehicle rally on mm -hmm. the top. So why not? Oh, I do this is life after all, and Johnny's a busy man. <laughs> so I'm sorry, so I do so right, you are excused. I should do that straight away. <laughs> this is so embarrassed. I think it's supposed to be on vibrate. It's alright. If my phone went off, it would be Lady Gaga and playing. And it's <laughs> I just had boring ringtones. I do apologise. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm going a little piece of whimsy for you. Um, many, many years ago, in 1971, I was given a brand new Lyra's Drive, mm. an ERF. The registration was BGB 337K, and the company I worked for, for some reason, kept this whole thing as a yard shunter <laughs> in the bed. Probably 18 or 19 years ago, I bought it in their sale, and, they oh, right, yeah. and I've still got it. Yeah. So, uh, you have a historic. If they want an old lorry, I'm your man. <laughs> it does need doing that. Because they do actually have an enormous um, display down oh, at yeah. uh, All World yeah. Crossing. Yes. Um, and that in itself, the event is highly well attended. But mm. I'm hopefully going to get Simon to come and talk about that. And we've got lots of other events. We've got out on the prom pack this year, haven't we? Yes, um, that carries on. Yes. Yes. Hopefully we are going to be extending it for an yes. extra day. Um, I'm not quite sure what happens is if that's a charity or not, which I presume it is, but I don't know where the money goes or, or anything else, so I, mean, I, I can't comment. I can't comment because I've actually got a meeting with Mary very shortly oh, right, because yeah. we're looking to extend it the day before yeah. um, in the sense of having a, having a, the whole of the town utilised, yeah. sort of the canopy yeah. area and bringing it down, so hopefully yeah. after the promise expanding It's not really issue. successful and obviously we all wish it well, I, mm. I just don't know if it's a charity or a business or all that. I'm not entirely sure, so no. I think we'll, 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 it would be nice to perhaps find out. It will be. It is um, successful. And, <coughs> good. 
I'm losing my voice this morning, which is not good. Right. <laughs> right, Felix Stone 100, I've got written down here. You found yes. that to me first thing. I did. I did. What's Felix Stone um, 100? It's very, very much in the melting pot at the moment. It, it's a new initiative by Suffolk County Council's Adult Care Services, mm -hmm. perhaps better known as social, social care. The idea is to get everybody together, all of the statutory bodies, which are the councils and the police, etc., etc., mm -hmm. and all the voluntary bodies. And you know, Felix, they just see the voluntary bodies. Yes. And the plan is to keep people out of hospital for as long as possible. And nobody wants to go to hospital no. because that's where you catch things, of course. Um, the figures for the increase in older people are absolutely frightening because they, you know. Hospital treatment is better. Uh -huh. Where before you we went to hospital and guaranteed to die of something, now you're pretty much guaranteed to be killed. So that that, yeah. that makes the whole demographics of old age get worse and worse and worse. And um, people with learning difficulties, they stay live longer and longer. So it is, it is very much an ongoing uh -huh. problem, which is good. I mean, it's nice that people live longer, but we need them to live longer in their own homes yes. for the better quality of life. People just off the top of my head that do things for the old, older people, Hope Trust in Mason Road, mm -hmm. they're fantastic. Sally Army around the corner, I mean, they do so much, which goes, you know, all of these people aren't some heroes. Parish nursing in Walton, again, tremendous amount of work. Mm -hmm. They do anything from dressing olders to ulcers to them. Um, they do chair based exercises and all those sorts of things, and it's really good work. But who knows where all these people are? And that's, that's the plan. We're going to do an experiment in Phoenix, uh, led by the County Council, just to see if we can actually work together and achieve a lot. Yeah, because I was about to comment on the fact that it's very difficult to find about care. Um, my friend has now found herself in a difficult position of looking after her mother, mm -hmm. um, who requires her legs to be dressed every day yeah. up at Ipswich Hospital. Now, she's a mother of two, and she has to juggle the school run. <laughs> her husband's um, erratic shift, because he's a shift worker, and obviously looking after her mother, but she's been able to find no help no. with it. It's very difficult to find some degree of support for her as well, because it's not just the elderly person, it's the carer as well. Quite oh, often absolutely. he gets ignored. I mean, the carers do a fantastic job. For, like most people, we do things for nothing. But like most people do things voluntarily, they don't get too much recognition of what they no. do. Um, perhaps on, a, on another thought, if you live on the continent, for instance, Italians, Greece, etc., they all, they all have a big extended family, they mm -hmm. all live together and help each other. That's not something we seem to do. No. But it's, it's a huge problem and it's getting bigger and bigger. And of course, funding for everybody is being cut. So mm -hmm. not only have you got the, you know, we, we all ask and beg voluntary services to do more and more and more, which they do. But equally, um, council resources, um, our funding is being cut mm -hmm. um, by the government, the central funding. So it, it is, you know, it's a no-win situation, and we've got to work smarter uh, to, you know, to get the, the best using American and get the best bang for the buck. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing that when they, when the Tories came into power, they were all pushing this concept of big society. Mm -hmm. Um, but then a lot of people sort of sat back and said, well, isn't that just an excuse to palm off um, what used to be funded, government funded things, to just literally the voluntary sector and trying to encourage the voluntary sector to work together better. But like you just said, I mean, it's incredibly difficult to network people because I, they've, I, been, I they've been separated for quite some time. I don't accept that, to be honest with you. I think that, you know, the, the big society is perhaps another another name for all the volunteer organisations that we've got. I mean, Felix, I'll guarantee you'll go a long way through this town to find somebody who knows who all the voluntary sectors are. Mm. Um, to give you a, a, a cancer, <coughs> excuse me, a cancer, I think, Queen's Road Day Centre, run by a lady called Jackie O'Malley. She's got the staff, she's got all sorts of volunteers that go in there. And the volunteers gain from it as much as the, as the, um, the customers, I mean, mm -hmm. the patients, as much as the customers do. There's a lady a couple of ladies go there and do the gardens, which they thoroughly enjoy, and they're mixing with people and all the rest of them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a guy with learning deputy who's been there for every the day, and he's fantastic, he gets on with everybody. Mm -hmm. So there's, and that big society, the Salvation Army, why do they do what they do? Yeah. Like the big society, parish nursing, why do they do it? Big society. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's a new name, but it's been going on for donkey years, mm -hmm. absolutely donkey years. And, you know, and the person who lives next door to do an elderly neighbour, when they go in and knock on the door and say, do you want any shopping? I'm off down to solar or whatever. 
that's a big society that it's happening, but it's, you know, or I was about to say, that. actually, there's, um, I mean, it's, it's very interesting nowadays when you ask how many people do you know in your immediate area, yeah. um, how many elderly people do you know of where you live? Um, I mean, we're very lucky now to have a, a shop that comes to Curtin twice a week, and it's a mobile one, because we lost our shop, I think it must be goodness me, about four or five years ago now. Um, but there is a few women who do actually go around to the elderly people in Curtin and say to them, I'm going to do the shopping, have you got a shopping list? Absolutely. And if you say and to them, do you realise you're part of the society? I say, don't be dark. <laughs> yes, I was going to say. They are, they are the society, you know, that's the, that's the thing. But hopefully, I mean, I'm, I'm a rampant royalist, and I don't mean like we've got Queen's Jubilee coming yep. out. All these street parties that take place, somebody's got to organise them, somebody's got to do the work, somebody's got to put the gazebos up, bake the cakes, etc, etc. They are all a big society. I mean, they'd be the food grunts of, you know, mm -hmm. and you would want to hide in the corner. And, uh, all that noise. Well, <laughs> this country choice. needs a party. I think the Jubilee and obviously then the Olympics. I mean, what's, um, what what's Felix going got to offer at the moment? Has there been any events? Um, come up to the full I don't know. I'm not, really the, so I'm not on the town council, so I've got to stood down from that, so I've got no idea if they're doing anything or not. I know they're going to like the um, the beacon, but whether the town council are organising anything, I absolutely mm. know not. They, like everybody else, of course, have short of money. But I know there's several people I know are holding street parties mm -hmm. and um, all sorts of different things. The Trimby St. Martin Bowls Club, it's in, I think the Canford Bowls Club, they are having an opening ceremony for their. Um, for their new hall or refurbished or like extended bit refurbished. Yeah, I was going to say, we've got a new hall on here, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you talk about the big society, I mean, they are like classics, and um, with locality money, they paid for them to have their electricity supply changed to serve the mm -hmm. leader, etc. They dug the trench, they built the trench in, you know, they're part mm -hmm. of the big society. Probably if you said to them, you know, are you the big society? They'll say, no, we're just a horse club. But they <laughs> are fantastic, they do so much stuff themselves. I mean, I, I've told you before they, they were closing buildings at Kenny County. Mm -hmm. so, well, um, we went over there we, we, to um, one of the buildings that's, that's near closed and picked up all sorts of things, one of which was a fantastic um, industrial cooker, some um, in local all bits and pieces of, in, of industrial kitchen equipment, chairs, you name it, you, we got it there. Mm -hmm. And it's fantastic, it saves it being dumped, you know. Yeah. That it's been given away to um, an organisation within the community. Um, you know, we can't hire a band and off it went, etc. The Welcome Hall at St Mary. Yeah. They've had loads of stuff, they've got tables, chairs, um, all you name it, they've had it. And it's, again, big society there. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of their hall, they're getting it refurbished, everything else. They've had the community payback, which is a naughty boys and girls brigade. They've been red and painted it free of charge, you just yeah. have to buy them the paint. Yeah. So all those things are there, you know, to be taken advantage of. But on your big society thing, it needs somebody to organise it. Mm -hmm. Somebody to open the hall, somebody to go and buy the paint. Probably a committee of 85 to decide what colour they want to have the hall. Yep. <laughs> We're yet to have a meeting on the colour of our building. Well, yeah. there, there um, I'm going for lime green. All those sorts of things, yeah. which um, people do, and they, they, they've got no idea they're the big society, but I hate they are. Because obviously with um, the big society and the way it functions and the, all, the, all the community groups and such like, there is a lot of movement afoot to coordinate events, mm. to coordinate fundraising opportunities, to utilise the facilities that the town has got. And I think for everybody who's passionate about it, we can actually get Felix so really working together. I think it's been a bit disjointed for quite some time now. People vying for dates and things mm. on, I think on the all best. All communities are disjointed because you all go off and do your own little mm. thing. I mean, the other thing I'm not on the, the, still on the theme of volunteers, etc. Mm. How many people do you know who are the bank of mum and dad? Mm. How many people do you know who are the daycare for children? Yep. You know? People live their lives around their grandchildren. Mm. And, um, you know, oh, I can't do this, can't do that, can't go here, can't go somewhere else. All school holidays come up and we're going to have to have the children. Yep, because these, obviously parents are having to work. Indeed, and these yep. are often people, you know, with advancing years. And um, I suppose you, you do it for the first grandchild, which is fantastic. You suddenly realise you've got 28 grandchildren, you do it for all the time. So, um, you know, the, the, I think there's a ripple effect, I was talking to Graham Harding about um, obviously people having to work longer and he's saying the strain on young people 
Um, and I think there's a lot more younger people, I say young, my age bracket, 30 upwards, wanting to get involved and doing more within their communities. Because I think they've recognised that that's a legacy that they've got to take over at some point. Otherwise, you're going to lose that facility, you'll lose the Welcome Hall. If nobody gets more involved, it's just going to disappear. I think, although to be fair, and I'm a very sort of um, sombre note, I think it's getting harder and harder because as people are more active as they get older, they want to go off and do, you know, the exotic holidays, mm -hmm. play golf, walk, whatever the heck they want to do, if you like me, if you want to ride a motorbike, which I still can do there. Um, and the younger people, some are stepping up, but there's a heck of a lot that aren't. Mm. If you look at all the voluntary things, you know, mostly they're, they're older people who are at the time, but there's not that many younger no, people there isn't. that want to get involved, which is a great shame because I think they're missing a huge, huge opportunity. But okay. Well, you'll have to have another discussion on that, I think. Um, just quickly before we uh, sign off, Phoenix Stone Academy, you're involved in some of that, am I correct? Um, well, it sits right in the middle of my area, which is, um, I mean, the, the plus. Is it's, we're going to have a brand new school for the, for the students of our area. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic news. Some of the barking mad things, or to my mind, barking mad anyway, we haven't got an area to drop the children off, so that'd be free for all you know, <laughs> young mums who can't go to the right. we, We've got a policy of the county council which was brought in with the last administration where they said, no, no, we're going to force people out of their cars, so we, we will, um, you know, we won't have drop-off points at schools, which causes huge problems every mm -hmm. time a school wants to do. That policy is being looked at, but unfortunately, I think it's never going to be too late for the academy. The, um, one of the other silly things, the car park is going to be stuck right outside some people's homes where they've been had to, the delight of looking at the plan because they're probably there for you know, being critical. Um, but they've been looking at the plan, but it's nearly going to look out in the car park. Well, I, I was a, substitute on the development control mm -hmm. and I said why have we got to have the car park outside of these houses, why can't it go alongside the actual school building and I thought barking mad answer but the chap said well we don't want the children to have to look out over a car park well <laughs> my idea is to thought school they should be looking, you should be be looking out the window, window right? one, of, one of my colleagues gave a the lovely dry and droll comment saying they should have the windows too high for them to see it when they're sitting down, which I thought was a, was a fair thing. <laughs> but things like that, you know, yeah. why isn't the building further back up the field, huge field? Yeah. Why isn't it put further back? Well, because we don't want it too near the railway line and make a noise. Well, we all know the, the new um, freight trains and passenger trains are whisper quiet, they're continuous mm -hmm. rails, so you don't get the de donk de donk de donk that you always used to get with railway. And the other side of the coin, there's a crossing at the top of the field, and I yeah. say, well, the trains are so quiet, the students aren't here and coming, and I've got iPods in their ears and I've got over the head. So, yes! <laughs> you've got that mixed message, but yeah. you can't put the school near to the railway because of the noise, but the trains are so quiet, the students aren't here and coming. So, you know, and you get things like that, and you just think right hand, left hand, and it, it's so frustrating. But, the building has gotten away, so we'll be yes, able to watch it. Yes, it's starting on the ground. Yep, I just think it, it's, you know, we've got to accept that however annoying aspects of it are, and they are incredibly annoying some of them, but it is a fantastically good measure yep. for the students, you know, of, of Phoenix, you know, the generations to come. It's, it's just school great. buildings <clears throat> being kind of tired. Mm. You know, what we look like, well, you know, made some canvas and Garrison. Garrison camps. I just think that <laughs> it's all well and deep, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot not get my head around that. No. It'll be all well and deep until they knock it down. And obviously, the other good thing when you get a new school is you won't have all these sort of children herding backwards and forwards between the students, as I say, children, herding backwards and forwards between the two sets of buildings. So they'll yeah, they'll all be under one roof. So, um, you know, you won't see a child there. Mm. Are they playing truant or are they, you know, we'll come they their way to somewhere else? And obviously the time they spend walking, you have to assume they're not learning too much. It's about a good 20 minute walk, well, 15, 20 minute walk, because I used to do it when I was back at school years ago. Anyway, I think we have to talk some more on the academy plans later on, but yeah. that's, believe it or not, has been half an hour, John. Right. So we've oh, filled, yeah, filled, filled it up with half an hour. So that's been absolutely brilliant having well, you. Thank you very much.
I'm sorry I haven't spoken much, but <laughs> I'm losing my voice today. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure, Don. Thank you okay, very much for coming. Thank you very much for watching and see you all tomorrow.